Welcome to Illustrator. This lesson is for painting and drawing. The first part, we're going to talk about how to use the paintbrush and do a little still life with an orange and an apple. The second part, I have a 3D form of a K and we're going to draw it using the pen tool. Please watch and maybe try to follow along. I will be asking you to use these skills in the next project. There is nothing to turn in for this video. If you'd like to follow along, start with creating a new document. Then go to print, and let's just pick letter size, and we're going to do portrait. I would change again to inches, and you only need one artboard. Hit create, and you're ready to get started. So first let's click on the paintbrush, which is B, and we're going to do one straight line. That's pretty easy, but do you see how it corrected itself? Let's do a circle. See how everything got a little bit smoother? It controlled the accuracy of the stroke. So if you're not the best in writing or don't have the best pen tool to be using, you're just using a clunky mouse like I do, you can change the accuracy to be really tight and make nice smooth curves. You can do that through properties under tool options. And you can see I have it all the way to the very end is smooth. Typically I keep it in the middle because I like accuracy and I like a little smoothness. Below here are some more options. This one's a great one to have, Edit Selected Path. And the great thing about this is that you can come back and edit a path again. So let's get the V tool, which is the selection tool. And if you select it and then go B again, and if I start off just at the tip, I can extend that line again. So if I wasn't quite done, I had to do V again and make sure it's selected and then B and then drag and move around. Next is thinking about size and scale. Plus is the right bracket, minus is the left bracket. So if I want to, I can change the stroke as I go. So a brush is primarily a stroke. So you can fill the stroke with any color. Next thing to talk about is some more of these like tools up here that we have. So we talked about that we want to make sure that it's a stroke. We talked about we could change the size. This doesn't do much. It's much better with the pencil. For here, this is where we get into the brush. And that's available over here. So we want to pull this out and you can still be able to see that these are pretty much the same. So brushes is great. They have some presets available. If we click on these little boxes, you can see that the brush library menu pops up. Let's click on that. And I like to just go to the artistic. Since we're just going to be doing uh, a still life, let's try to use one of these to kind of do some painting. So all of these now are available. This is kind of like swatches. It's going to set up all the brushes that you want to use. And let's make sure you have the brush on. So that's B again. So when we use these brushes above here, all of these will change with the bracket. When we start moving below it to these custom brushes, we will have to use the stroke. So if I start with this first charcoal feather, I'm going to have to change it through the stroke size, which you can also do in properties. So I'm just going to do a circle. And let's change the opacity. And maybe let's change the color. And we really can kind of build up the form with these layers and with the different uh, brushes that we have. We can really build the layer. You can see I'm just using property now and I can just quickly grab a new brush and change my stroke weight. Uh, but you can see I'm getting some interesting texture. And check out the library to make sure there isn't other brushes that you would like. Just drag and delete the ones you don't like. So I provided you with Fruit One, so let's open that up. Make sure you've already downloaded it from Canvas. Go to File, Place, and find where you downloaded it. You might have it in Downloads, or you might have put it in a special folder. Like, it wouldn't be a bad idea to put it in your Project One. Mine's right here, and I'm going to open it up, and then I'm just going to place it. So this thing's huge. 
I'm going to use Command uh, minus to move it out so I can see it. And then remember to do V to grab the corner, holding Shift to bring it to the page. And then you can do Command plus to bring it back. All right, I got the file in, so let's start painting. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my eyedropper and select a whole bunch of colors from my fruit. I'm going to go with a lighter and then a middle grade and then a dark. The apple, a dark green to a lighter green to a very dark. And then if I want to, I can increase the size to find just the right color. You can see it's slightly changing as I go. And the brush I like to use just to get the colors down and not to be playing with texture so much, it's just a solid circle. It just fills the form up quickly. Paintbrush only uses a stroke color. Remember, you can also grab your strokes from here. And these tools right here, I can use by scaling it up and down with the brackets. I'm gonna stay away from my uh, from my orange top and just kind of go around it so I can come back and put a little more detail to it. You know, take your time when you're doing this for your still life to make sure everything kind of stays straight and you get the best looking orange you can. And now I can go and change to another color and just sample color as you go. Do I for eyedropper and I kind of select this color again. So I just want to show you what it looks like uh, after I get rid of the background. The goal for this is just for you to kind of play around with the brush and see how closely you can get to what it looks like as an orange. This is a very artistic uh, interpretation of a still life. So let's start on the apple. I'm going to do this really quickly and you can watch my process. Again, I'm just probably going to eye drop the colors as I go and pick the a circular brush and then probably come back if I have more time and use the more artistic brushes to add texture. So let's start on the apple. So again, I'm going to start with selecting and then painting, selecting and painting. So I'm going to start with the top and then this is just going to start, you're going to start seeing me build these up quickly.
So it's a lot of trial and error, as you can see, to get that brush to really work. Um, can get some unique kind of scratchy kind of textured aspects out of the, these brushes. All right. So that's a little demo on brushes. Hopefully you're taking some time to test this out yourself. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out the background. So by doing that, I'm going to uh, do unlock, which is the option command two, and I'm going to delete it and see what I got. So that's kind of a fun kind of painterly apple and orange. So there's one other tool I want to show you, which is a gradient. All right, so let's add a gradient. So the first thing is I'm going to get a shape. So that's M if you want to do a rectangle. And I'm going to pull it and kind of park it right in between the fruit. And then after we do that, I'm going to select the gradient. And now you've got um, some commands up here that we haven't seen before. And the first one I'm going to do is the linear gradient, but you can do the circular one and then you can do the freedom. And we'll talk about this one in a minute. I think this is the one I really enjoy, but let's go back to the traditional one. You can change the colors, uh, by clicking on it and it'll pull up, uh, your swatches and you can change it this way, uh, either direction, double, I'm just double clicking on it and I'm able to change it. You can add one but you have to see that see that plus come up see that then you can add one all right we'll make this one even darker so it looks like the background and let's change it because we already have an orange color all right so this doesn't make sense for our uh background so top to the bottom to get that gradient i can also kind of tilt it if i wanted to this is the color that I'm on, that circle. This is a diamond that's blending the two together. So there's less of a blend or more of the blend. So that's the basic gradient all set up there. Uh, we might want to put a little drop shadow here if we want. Again, you should spend more time on this. I'm just quickly doing it. I can grab a little bit of the brown, switch it back to the stroke and make it into opacity. Try to blend over on top of the very dark black. I'm gonna change it to opacity and I've got the brown still. And I can go back and forth with this process, now adding black into it and then brown. There's another gradient of delete this one. I'm gonna add another square back to where it was. And then I'm gonna go to the gradient tool and I'm gonna to toggle through these. And now you can see that I got this uh, more blended color. So what this is is all of these are colors that I, again, can change, make them darker to match. I can move the colors into to effect and blend. So it really has some nice qualities to it. So if I wanted the background to be whiter, where the fruit are kind of are, I can add another color, which would be maybe more of an orange on this end. I can increase the size. So it really creates this kind of watercolor uh, effect. And you can and get this nice white globe in the back. This kind of interesting. So play around with that a little bit and see what you can get to create more dynamic space. To mask everything uh, so we have a nice clean shape. And I want to select everything and I'm going to group it. And then I can take rectangle cover it up, mask everything. Masking really makes it that you can clean up the edge. That's command seven. And see now it makes it a really more picturesque uh, painting. So that is the painting. When you do this for your assignment, uh, it's okay that this is rough and very playful. At this point in the video, please take a break. It would be good if you tried out some of the skills you just learned. This video does not have an assignment attached to it. Let's use the pen tool to make an image. This is part two. Let's go get the image that I provided. Please make sure you've already gone to Canvas and downloaded it, if you would like to follow along. So I'm gonna go to place and I'm gonna find it. Again, it might be good to download everything and put it into project one. Mine is on the desktop. The file is my K and let's place this. All right, this is again a very big picture. So let's use the command plus and minus uh, to go uh, get to the other end. So command minus, grab that corner, hit shift and drag it back onto the page. Let's do command plus to bring us back. So I picked this K because I really want to just look at these very severe geometric shapes. All right, we got this all centered in. 
And then the next thing, let's just do that command two to lock it. We don't want our image to be moving around. And I think it'll be important to start introducing layers. The photo is on layer one. We're gonna create a new one. And the thing about layers is it's literally what it's called. It's layering. You put one and then the next layer is on top of the next layer and so on and so on. So let's grab the pen tool. And if you hover over it, remember you can click on any of them. They have the little triangle and we can see all the pen tools. So let's pick P for pen. And what I'm gonna do is click and then click. So when I click, another segment line comes out. So I just go down and I click on the next corner. And as you can see, the fill is automatically filling. And we want to make sure that this just stays stroke. It just makes it a lot easier to see. So this is a front. So this is the furthest front. So I'm going to outline this and I'm going to put it on a layer and call it front. So the next will be, again, we're just clicking at these little points. I'm going to start in a little bit of the rectangle we just created. So I'm going to click and then you can see that the segment is moved out. And then I'm going to click again. We're going to be enclosing all these forms click again, click again, and again, and come back through. And then let's hit shift and I want to close it. See how there's a circle there? That's how we're going to close this shape. And you have to be careful that you don't think you closed it and then you don't really have a full shape. So the arm will continue if it's not truly closed. So you want to make sure it is. All right, so we have our shape. I will call this front. And you can double click on it to get this layer option. Now let's turn that off. And let's do, let's do this one, this one, and this one. And I'm gonna put it on a new layer, the sides. Click. To get the pen tool again, which is just P. And it's, I'm just clicking on the corners. So let's do this one here, here, here. And again, it did close. I know that, why? Because I didn't get the extension of another uh, line. Okay, so all of these are done and we called that a side. Let's add one more. So I wanna do this severe color here. So I'm gonna click on this. And this is kind of like a shadow. And I would say, this is kind of a shadow too. A little shadow here. So I'm gonna call these shadow. Because we don't have our little edges, tops. All right, let's hide the shadows. And let's do these tops. So let's go back and let's start with front and let's give this front a color. So I'm gonna switch it to a fill. And I'm also can go to Pathfinder and I can create it into one. And at this point, we can add a color. So let's add a blue. All right, so we've got the front, it looks good. We can close pattern, I mean, we can, we can close Pathfinder. So let's go to the sides. So the sides are a little bit darker than the front. We selected them and we're going to change it into a fill. And then we're going to go up to our color palette and we're going to do a darker blue. So we're already getting this nice geometric shape here. So let's click off the sides because we completed that. Shadows, select the shapes you made, change it to a fill, and then let's find that dark blue. And we'll go to this darker blue. And then the last is the top. And the nice thing is if you did hide all the rest, I can just select just what I need. That's why it's great to keep them separate in layers. So let's switch it and then let's find a really light blue. We could even do a gradient. We're getting really close to having this fun form is I think this actually should be sides and maybe we change it to the same color. So let's move it to sides. And I do that by selecting and then because it's the only one selected in that layer, I literally can just drag it to a different layer. See how it changed color? It was pink and then it went to green. And then I want this to be the same color as this. And we know from the fruit that all I need to do is select it. So I can go to transparencies and create an effect to make this more relatable to this color. Since it's sitting on top of the color, uh, we can use transparency 
and go under this normal mode blend and let's use soft light. And you can see now it's closer to the color. It feels more like a shadow. This one I think is okay. We might want a little darker blue and we could change that in color and kind of make it a darker blue. And then the final thing would be to kind of go in here and clean this up. So I can use my zoom and zoom in the direct selection. And I can select on these and I can kind of pull them down. And I'm kind of just eyeballing it to how to get them to fit correctly. Does this move up? Does this move down? So I'm selecting the one on top of it. Remember, I can go to layer, just want to lock it. So initially I kind of drew out the geometric shapes I saw. And now I come back and kind of make sure that they fit in correctly. I like how there's a little dark line in that fold. And if I want, I can bring it up a little closer and see that there's an effect that's falling also on the front facade of the K. All about detail and looking and kind of fussing with stuff to get it to be just right. And the preference between a paintbrush and this is yours. You know, which one do you find more successful? They both take time. So I'm gonna go through this in a fast pace uh, so you can kind of see how I just put these pieces together. And there's my finished K. All right, so the next thing I'd like you to do, start watching the videos for exercise. And remember, try this out uh, before you start working on the exercise. I think it'll be very helpful, but you do not need to turn it in.